Hardware versus plugins. In this video, I give you my five pros and cons of using hardware and plugins coming up next. What's up, guys? My name here with another music production video. If you haven't subscribed, hit the bell, click subscribe to get my latest videos in your feed. In this channel, you're going to find tips, tricks, unsalted reviews that will help you in the music creation process. In this video, I go over the pros and cons of using hardware synthesizers, plug-in BSTs in your music production, and I'll give you some examples of how I use them in my own productions. Yeah, so let's hit the studio and let's get this thing done. All right, guys, so we're going to start with a little bit of a, how I set up my uh, analog gear before I start making music, and I'm going to time it as well and see how long it takes me to set everything up. <laughs> what you're hearing behind is what I was making after I got this setup going. But one of the interesting things is that, you know, I take everything apart take all the cables off and especially from like the um, modular synthesizer so I can start from scratch every time that I'm making music uh, so I'm not so I don't have like this uh, pretty determined way of making music every time is different right so as you'll see in this video you, it's going to take us a little bit longer so throughout the process uh, of me setting up and everything getting ready uh, i'm going to go through my pros and cons of uh, each setup you know of uh, doing B like bsts and doing hardware and um, yeah but the videos that you're going to see one video is going to be me setting up my hardware uh, like rig to start making music and the other one's gonna be setting up my BST rig with my laptop so you get to see that too and how long it takes and <laughs> which one's the clear winner so which one do you think is gonna be the winner okay so let's get to it let's go through the first five pros of uh, using BST plugins right the first one is uh, Depending on how you get your BSTs, right? Uh, if you can get them to a special shop, and I don't think that you should do that, but you know, it is what it is in this day and age. But you also get free trials for the plugins, and you can get to test them out and make uh, like a more informed decision on how you're gonna use those plugins and if they're worth investing the money on. Which I think it's a uh, it's a good way to do it. Um, you know, like. I mean, some plugins are really cool, you know, but sometimes it might take a little bit longer in the learning curve and you might only use them like once in your entire lifetime. So you might not want to get that plugin. So having free trials is really great. Then my number two um, pro is, uh, you know, presets and versatility with presets, right? So when you're not inspired and as you're seeing behind you know setting up you know it just takes time and it's just like it, it's part of the process of going uh with hardware it's uh the opposite with bsts right you plug it you get the plug-in going and then you get a bst uh a preset and then you're good right you're good to go you can start making music uh so that's uh, that's for sure a pro you know like uh you might have just like half an hour to make music throughout the day and you might not want to be spending it setting up your your rig so yeah there you go oh and the other thing right is like you're probably thinking well why my end you don't like keep your rig you know like uh, on your table and then you don't have to do that well two things for that one i have a baby i have a, a 17 month old and if i were to do that he would probably want to hang out at the studio doing his own music and at this age <laughs> i don't know if that's a if that's wise um because i like my gear and the second is uh, as i mentioned before i love starting from scratch and then making my own sounds so those are the two reasons why i take everything apart put it away and then put it back out 
Uh, then going back to the pros of uh, BSTs, you know, it's uh, portability. Right now, you know, if you wanted to do a, a BSD only like rig in your computer, you can totally do that. And you only need a laptop pretty much, right? And later on, if you want to invest some money, you can get into uh, building a, um, you know, getting a, a sound card and like all this other stuff. Uh, in my current rig for when I travel, I have a MacBook Pro. Then I use the, the Arturia Keystep and I use the uh, Universal Audio uh, Arrow and it works really, really, really great for me. Uh, so yeah, uh, my fourth um, pro for BSTs, it's for sure, for sure the the fact that you just open your DAW and then you're good to go, right? You don't have to like figure out some other things that I'm going to point out as cons for hardware later on in this video. But yeah, that's uh, that's for sure something that is is key when you're making music, right? Sometimes, like I said, you only have 30 minutes, so you want to like make them count and open up opening up your uh, DAW and not worrying about like latency when you're recording and like all these other crazy things that go on with hardware. It's a good way to go. Uh, also, if you really think about it, price, right? So. As I'm going through here, you know, and I look at my, my hardware uh, rig that I have here, I'm still missing a couple of uh, key elements that are, uh, uh, they're not in, in, the, in the shot that I was uh, doing for, for this setup. But, you know, just if I start racking up numbers, there's a lot of money invested in, in hardware, right? While in, uh, you know, plugins, you're able to get free plugins there's a bunch of like really nice free plugins out there you can get them you know uh through splice some of them i think serum you can you can pay as you go and then as as soon as you get to the the amount that you're supposed to like pay for that daw then it's zero so you only pay like nine dollars a month or something like that i'm not i'm not entirely sure about that so uh, and then you know if if you're if you feel in the need of uh, special shopping them that's uh, that's something else that you do right so so yeah so now after 14 minutes of talking 15 minutes i get to start making music with my uh, analog rig as you can see in the video so for sure, you know, even though this part of the video was sped up, um, 15 minutes to set up your rig, if you're doing it like I am, right? So let's move to the to the pros of hardware. Okay. So one, I think that one of the, the, the main reasons why I started getting into hardware is uh, uh, the limitations, right? Like you don't have a thousand presets you know to like to start like making music you so for instance like with my um like modular you know you have to start patching you know before you start getting some sounds so your creativity like plays a big role on that uh the other thing uh, my my number two pro with with hardware is that you have you get your unique sound so like for instance like if you look at uh having a modular synthesizer you have to like let it warm up before it actually starts sounding good right and then you might plug in one of the cables in in the wrong module but you get this awesome sound so that unique sound is what really like drives me uh to use hardware because i believe that those little mistakes make music worth listening to um well people that produce some bsts everything is perfect automation is perfect and so you know like uh, i think that people are just getting 
really over the the, the perfection in music. I think that uh, the imperfection in music it's it's key. So so yeah, to me that's that's the reason. Like another pro, uh, you know, number three would be it's an actual musical instrument, right? It's a hands-on experience. So stepping away from the computer. You know, especially when you're mixing your own tracks, you're not sending them out to like a mixing engineer. You know, you're spending a lot of time looking at a computer, mixing your your tracks. And then at that point, you know, you're like, oh, my gosh, like I've been sitting in a computer for a long time. And uh, yeah, I, I think that it's good to like step out of the box. And, and get creative with with your gear uh the other thing is the focus right that hardware gives you uh, so what i mean about focus is that if you're working with a computer right it's uh so sorry a little break setup time with a bsd rig is about three minutes before you actually start making music as you can see in the video so that's cool you know i mean again you know the quickness of it you can start making music right away and uh yeah it just depends on how many plugins do you have and then you go through like the presets if you want to do that if you want to start from scratch and building your own patch that's how long it's going to take you All right so going back to the pro of uh, of using um you know uh hardware is the focus right so if you're making music in the box you have your computer so usually you know you have ways of like going to social media you know and um and like things that take the focus away from like the music making time so i think that that's also great when you're doing like uh, uh, a a hardware rig uh and then there's no comp computer crash right uh, what I mean about no computer crash is uh, your RAM, your your CPU is not going to get oversaturated and, um, you know, you're jamming, you're getting the groove going, but then all of a sudden, like, your computer stops, Logic stops, or Ableton stops because, uh, you know, RAM doesn't hold whatever plugins that you're using, and then you're like, oh, like, then you're trying to figure out that part. So... So yeah, that's those are like my five pros for hardware. And then I'm gonna go over like my five cons for BSD plugins, right? And uh, you know, uh, some people get PAZ, PA, sorry, PAS, which is Plugin Acquisition Syndrome, where like every time that somebody comes up with like a new plugin, you want it. So you end up having like a million plugins but you only end up using like one or two and then you have spent time money uh trying to figure out how those plugins work so yeah i i used to do that and then i eliminated probably like 95 percent of the plugins that i had and now i have probably like mm, i don't know 10 like synthesizer plugins that i make music with some of them are from arturia the other ones are from korg and i think the ace is from uhe and that's about it oh and like the the doll oh, see if i keep on naming them <laughs> remembering like the ones that i have it's it's crazy so yeah that's one of the cons uh presets right people sometimes don't even change the sound of a preset so every uh, track out there tends to like sound similar um then you have updates right so you're working on a track and or you want to start working on a project that you had you know done a couple of, of weeks back but then all of a sudden like you turn on the computer and you you, you start working on it but you need you need to like um, update so that's time you know it's, it's time consumption um <laughs> Of course, I mentioned this before with hardware is that uh, CPU and RAM, you know, like depending on the plugins that you're using, um, it's going to eat up your computer's RAM. So that's annoying. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the focus, it's uh, 
It's it's the other like con that I see with BSTs. And let's see. <laughs> let's go back to to hardware and look at my five cons. Right. Of course, the price. And I mentioned this, you know, when I did the the pros for BSTs. Like the price is crazy. You know, like sometimes, uh, like just just simple modules can for for especially for like uh, a modular synth you know they can go for like a hundred dollars to i don't know seven hundred dollars uh the buckless or buckless i don't know how you say that in english um but they can go for like sixteen two thousand dollars right per module so it can get pretty expensive so the so one of the cool things, right, that I did not mention in the the, the pros uh, for hardware is that you have to be pretty selective on what you get uh, and use it, right? Uh, then, of course, is gas or gear acquisition syndrome with gear. It's like, it's amazing, you know, like every new hardware synthesizer is something that just, like, sometimes I... I go without sleeping, thinking about how am I going to get this new thing. Uh, but one one thing that I've been doing lately is that if I, I kind of like check an inventory of my previous scenes, and if I'm not using one, you know, then I make the hard choice of like, okay, maybe I need to sell um, this piece of gear to get this other one that might help me out, you know. But like, um, I've been keeping myself pretty honest and. Uh, like when it comes to like um for instance like electron um gear you know they have like the mark twos and all sorts of stuff but i i love the like the mark ones with with the analog four octatrack and analog rhythm and i'm gonna stick with those until they don't work anymore uh sub 37 amazing that's like my go-to and then like the modular man like that's that's just crazy but the good thing about modular is that you can resell the plugin let the plugins you can resell the modules and yeah modules are kind of like plugins except that you don't get presets with them um so yeah that's something to think about uh connectivity with a daw right um so like right now as you could see back in the video um the connectivity with my DAW, it actually goes through a, you know, a multi-clock RME to make it to the DAW. So everything is in sync because when you're using different types of, uh, of connectivity, even though you're using MIDI, uh, you might get my fifth, no, my fourth con, which is MIDI jitter. And if you don't know what that is, I'll uh, set up a link so you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, to hardware and connectivity with a computer, or which it's pretty annoying. Um, and I know that you know, like a millisecond might not sound like like much to the untrained ear, but if you're working in music like I am, it's super super annoying. So, yeah. And then, of course, you know, when you're recording, you have to have, like, a, a really, really awesome, uh, like, sound card, right? Like, uh, besides the UAD Aero that I use for traveling, I also have an Apollo that I plug everything into. So, um, so yeah. yeah. And even at, at times, you know, depending on what you have open in your computer and all this other stuff, you might not... Um, have success with with latency so so yeah uh, so going back to um my current setup you know i i kind of like i would say that i have like a hybrid i would say that my setup is 70 30 70 percent hardware and 30 percent plugins um and it works for me so i have no i i don't to be honest, to make music, you can make music with, I don't know, with with a bucket, you know, if you wanted to. So, um, 
it depends on your preference it depends on your budget but uh, what I wanted to point out with this video is that everybody you know it's like oh it, it's like the same exact thing as like <clears throat> Uh, DJs that DJ with a laptop or CDJs or DJs that DJ with vinyl. It, it, like, I think that in in our current age, uh, uh, like time and age where we are at, we're blessed with technology. So let's use all the technology to make awesome music. That's all I have to say. You know, don't get stuck in like, oh, should I buy like uh, this plugin or should I buy this synthesizer? Don't get stuck there. You know, just make music, make it happen, make it work for you. Uh, you know, I I don't hate on people that only use synthesizers. I hate on people that only use synthesizers if they're not making music and they're not putting music out there for other people to listen to. Uh, I don't hate on people that only use BSTs or they only use loops to produce music if they're putting music out there for the world to, to listen. So uh, I think that the main goal for for us as music producers and aspiring music producers and, and future like superstar musicians is, come on guys, like let's make music. That's what it's all about. Don't worry about how you're making it. Just let's, let's get to it, you know? Um, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, question of the day for you guys is what are you using what are your favorite plugins what are your favorite hardware that you're using right now and uh and yeah how many tracks have you done this year you know all right guys thanks for watching